This is the EVP Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of the EVP Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Beaker. We got Ghosty in the house. And we have a very special guest with us today. Uh, I'm, Someone you have heard mentioned plenty We've of times. mentioned before. Um, I think he got sick of us saying we're going to come visit him in Nevada, so he came here to visit us. We have the owner-operator of Paranormal Veracity, Paul Welch. Hello, peeps. Everybody's clapping. Give him a right 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 round of applause. <laughs> All right, Paul thanks for Welch in the house. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs> so I've this is another episode of Scared, scared and Fascinated with Paul Welch. <laughs> <laughs> so scared already. <laughs> As you should be. Yeah. So, Paul. We're fascinated. You've been in the paranormal for how many years now? Oh, since 2011. So it's been a minute. And so let's start off with what got you into the paranormal? Actually, I've been fascinated my entire life watching a lot of History Channel, Ghost, and Bigfoot, Loch Ness. So mystery has always intrigued me, but uh, it was actually a friend of mine won a ticket on a radio show to go to Asylum 49 to do a ghost hunt, and he invited me along. So that's kind of what got my feet in the door. And ever since... And ever since, <laughs> so and that was my first place. And then he became the greatest paranormal investigator that Utah has ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> so growing up, did you have anything happen to you growing up? I don't remember, when I, but when I was married, like we'd have stuff happen at the house all the time. And you were married to a medium, right? <laughs> right. And so what, what was going on at the house? Well, the craziest thing I saw, it was, it was after my father passed away. Like we we had a bathroom with a really long sink, you know, and one of those um, bed bath and beyond soaps like just went sliding all the way across the counter as I walked into it. Oh damn! Yeah, it didn't tip over. It was one of those ones that were square at the bottom and narrow near the top. It just as soon as I walked in, just slid all the way across and stopped. Oh shit! And I was like, what the hell is that? Was this <laughs> so? Was this before or after you uh, created your old team? This was actually before I got really into the paranormal. Okay. I didn't have a team. Like I said, I just barely did Asylum 49, like, maybe two times. So this was, like, my feet just getting wet. So this popped your cherry? Pretty much. This was the like, event that popped Paul's what cherry. The, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's going on in my house? <laughs> I'm so fascinated and scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to call the exorcist. I've only seen this on movies, you know. Oh shit! And then so, uh, did, what else happened after that? Like, what led you up to starting your team? Um, after that, we had um, we had like a lot of motion detectors in the house for the alarm system, <clears throat> and like uh, the day after my father passed, like it went off. Uh, one of our room's motion detectors went off, and, like, cops got called. We could walk through with the cops. Like, you know, nobody was there. Everything was shut. shut. And I told him, yeah, my father just passed away like, yesterday morning. And, like, just had this just ghost face on. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't figure it out. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. I would definitely, that would definitely cross my mind. <laughs> So then, uh, anything else, any other crazy things happened that before? Not to me, but, like, my ex-wife would always call me saying, oh, this fell off the counter, this fell off the bed, whatever, just weird stuff, just moving in the house when I wasn't there. Oh, shit. And she would expect me to leave work just to go be there. And what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? You know, like, He's gonna, you're going to come home and you're going to be like, listen here, you ghosties. <laughs> not not you, ghostie, but you ghosties. Stop moving stuff. Yeah, start cocking some guns. You hear this? Yeah. And you guys do any more but moving this, around. This was at a time where I was still like, no, there's nothing in our house. You know, like, like I'm going to call Harold Ramis. Ghostbusters. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, no, I, I know that. I know on. that. <laughs> <laughs> so were you still like at this point just kind of on the fence on whether or not you believed in spirits right i was i would tell her like nah just you're crazy whatever 
Had, when she, was she already like saying she was a medium at like, no no no? She was just realizing that she had, but didn't she know. She didn't it realize yet. anything. Like she, this was way way before she kind of started that whole mediumship thing. Oh okay. Like someone had to kind of push her. Like no, you have abilities, mm-hmm. and open that door. I remember that. I I knew her before she right. started being able to before she came into her gifts so yeah. i kind of remembered that whole flip the transitioning over. yes right because we we started the paranormal team and she didn't have the gifts when we started so i don't know if it was the investigations that kind of helped open her up or if it was something that helped her open up but it's like i've been with her We'd be out to dinner, and, and she'll just suddenly pull a waitress aside and just say, hey, you have this person with you. Describe them to a T, and that waitress would be crying her eyes out like. Oh, shit. Yeah, I was like, kind of like that TV show. I can't remember her name, but she would do that shit all the time. Oh, like the Long Island Medium? Yeah, I'd have to tell her, mm-hmm. like, can we just go out to eat without having someone cry at her dinner table there? Did so she like, do it after the check came by? Or I was going to say. She, <laughs> she would like, do it like as we're ordering our food. So it'd be like a huge interruption. Into so how often did you get a discount for doing that? <laughs> never. <laughs> they never did? Then no one ever hooked it up? No. Oh, damn. So, so you have stuff going on in your house. You're not really <laughs> sure if you believe in the paranormal. She doesn't know what's going on. You've done a couple investigations. So what was that final like push that got you to be like, hey, we should start a team? Because I'm assuming it was you and your wife or ex-wife that started. No, it was actually she started going to these events. I don't remember if you remember the, the psychic trucker lady. I can't remember her name. Eva? She it was, it was part of Eva's team back in the old days. I just remember Eva and Benny. Eva, Benny, and there's a, there was a, I think her name was Teresa or something. Uh, they called her the psychic trucker because she was a trucker at one time. Oh, really? <laughs> the psychic and trucker. And she was a medium, and, and my ex was going to the her events and then kind of roped me into a, hey, you need to start going to these. Oh, okay. And uh, as that team was starting to kind of fall apart, we approached Eva like, we got to start our own, you know. Just got a bell on this chick, and we're going to do it nice. on our own. Yeah, you can't trust those psychic truckers. Yeah. <laughs> can't trust them truckers. <laughs> so you guys created a team, and it, honestly, it had a pretty cool name. You guys were the Badass Beard Outlaws. Yeah, the women decided that. Oh, that wasn't you? That <laughs> no, was it wasn't not, me. The name is no longer as cool as I thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> they're not going to hear this. No. That, that name came out, and they're like, yes, that's the one. I always thought that was a weird name, to be honest with you. But it it's was a mouthful, of, but it, I, mean, like, I mean, at least it's cool. You had a cool logo. It was Did a cool logo. logo. I designed that. I know you, I've, I've seen some of your art designs, and so I, yeah, it was a pretty cool logo. It was. Sucked to walk away from that. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I designed that one, so. So when you were with um, Badass Beard Outlaws, you guys focused mainly on, like, public events or just doing your own thing or what 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 did you guys kind of it was a lot of public events which i eventually got tired of like no i want to go out and do some real investigating filming i know how you feel so i can't do that when i'm taking 10 or so people around the location and showing them how to go on you know yeah And I've already, at that time, like, when I was getting tired of it, I've already kind of went out with friends on my own and did, like, these other locations, big locations like the Washoe Club, where we had full control of everything that we were doing. I'm like, that's what I want to do. Hell yeah. Full control. Full control. So I know, <laughs> um, I know you've, you've done a lot of events uh, here in Utah before you moved, moved away to Nevada. Um, I've done a couple of them with you. I know you were you started a series at one point called the Alone in the, and the first one you did was the uh, Alone in the Mill. Um, do you still do stuff like? Oh, well, first, can you explain like what I'm talking about so people don't aren't like confused? I know I know what I'm talking about, but so I had this idea like 
to offer people, the small group, a chance to do a building alone. So I would sell what, four tickets to an event, pretty cheap, you know, and I'd give them like 45 minutes to themselves in a building to themselves. And I thought the first time we did Ben's and Chris Mill, that, that turned out pretty awesome. Basically, I, we'd put someone in the mill by themselves, and then the four others would split up two and two to go elsewhere. And so, you know, I did maybe two events, one at Ben's and Chris, one in Eureka, where people got the bank to themselves. We had a lot of fun. Did you get a lot of, uh, a lot of evidence out of Eureka? A lot. And I got one of the coolest EVPs that I got was a little kid in the bank. Um, Jessica Don was actually investigating the loan in there, and I had a voice recorder going. She leaves because her time's up. And as soon as she walks out the door, you just hear all this stuff being thrown, and then you hear this little boy say, Mom! Like he's yelling really? for his mom who just left Holy the building. Shit. Wow. And like I remember the chills I got from hearing that for the first time. I was like, Whoa. That's cool. Because it's like one thirty in the morning in a ghost town of Eureka. Mm-hmm. It's like, where did that come from? Oh, shit. Yeah. And the first thing I thought of is like, you know, when uh, kids are left with their babysitter and the parents walk out the door and then they're screaming, move, don't leave. <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought of when I heard that. That's really cool. Yeah. And she told me, because Jessica is gifted. She was on, what team was that? I can't remember the name. Ghouls. So she was on the Ghouls team. I don't think I've still, heard of that team. They're still going, but they don't really work with anybody else. So she was on that team. Uh, I don't remember how I got her involved in that alone event, but she came. And so she was gifted. She told me there was a little boy in the bank. Then we got that EVP that night, so I was like, "That's cool." That is really cool. Yeah, especially like I mean, you know, it's not one of the investigators because I mean, you only had a small group. This she was in there by herself. Eureka, like you said, was a ghost town. Nobody lives there, right? So there's not going to be any kids there. So that's actually a really good piece of evidence. That is, like I said, she was alone. Her time was up, and in my audio, I believe I still have the whole clip, but you could hear her walk out of the building. And she had to walk up to where we were in a different building, so. And it sound the voice sounds close to the recorder. <clears throat> well, it doesn't sound close, but it you can tell it's from in the building. Nice. But you could actually hear things like being tossed. thrown around, making noise, and then you just hear that little boy just scream out. That's Mom! awesome. Like, whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> do you have that that you can play for us, or? I it? do. You do. Okay. So while he's looking that up, uh, when we did the alone in the the mill at Bentinger's Mill, I know we had uh, several times because you left an audio recorder in the mill, and there was several times where there would either be nobody in the mill or the person that was in there by themselves doing their thing, and you would get footsteps. Uh, you you, I mean, you heard it quite a bit throughout the night, like especially at parts where there was nobody in there, or you could tell that the person had like sat down. But I think most of it came like after, like we were when we were transitioning, mm-hmm. when we were switching on who was in there. So there'd be like nobody in the building, and he had footsteps on his audio recorder. And I remember before he did any of those series, there was a time at the old uh, Family Tree restaurant where we were all there when Paul saw the scariest shit of his life. I was standing right next to him. I was upstairs. Yeah, you were with me. I was standing right next <laughs> to what happened. You were facing me, so you didn't get to see it. Yeah, no, I, I heard it I... all from upstairs. and I was like, what was that, an earthquake? <laughs> no, we were, me and Corey were just talking about it last night because she's like, I've never heard you respond to anything like that. I've, this is the only time I've seen you actually scared on an investigation, and I've done a lot of investigations with you. Yeah, I that was a scary drive home by myself, I can tell you that. <laughs> So you got this EVP here, and then we'll talk more about Family Tree and some other stuff here. Is that it? Maybe. No, I mean, is that the file? You got it right there? Yeah. That's why I said maybe. Too. (laughs) 
That's pretty Yeah, good. put it up to the mic. And do it one more time or put your phone like right next to the microphone. Fine. I, th- we're just picky. We want Guys, the listeners. This is absolutely the- Hold on. Is it? Welcome to it's Professional absolutely. Podcast. The EVP Podcast. It's absolutely. We're the best. That's the problem with YouTube is like you got to deal with what comes afterwards. Yeah, that's true. That's actually really That's clear. pretty nuts. Yeah, and yeah. so it sounds it's like... It's so, so clear, kinda... it's like... That was like a $20 voice recorder I was using right there. Nice. Yeah, that's definitely right in there, and you can hear stuff getting banged around. Yeah, in an empty bank, like, that hasn't been used for probably since the 80s. It was the last time it was actually occupied as a bank. Mm-hmm. And you've been in that building. I don't know you've been in there. Negative. I've never been to Eureka. Really? Oh, yeah. no, he missed out. He missed out on that. I, had, I know Castle was there. I had actually set up a public event, and then I got forced into overtime at work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's go. right. But, yeah, I was with Castle in there. Yeah, that's that's when I went that night too. I've seen it on Ghost Adventures. <laughs> Guess who gave them the information about those buildings? It was me and Danielle. Between me and Danielle, they got the information for the contact for those buildings and the mansion. Nice. The and connections. I wasn't on the episode. It should have been. <laughs> they should always have you on, like whatever. Tell them that we need. I'm going to write a letter to our. I was almost Zach. on the new uh, Jack and Kelly Osborne show that they did out in the prison in the Watcho Club recently. Oh, really? Oh, they have their own show, an- another show coming out it's now? It's not Portals to Hell anymore? Not Portals to Hell. No, it's this one's Jack with and Kelly. His sister. I don't, oh, know, okay. I don't know what they call it, but they came and filmed at the prison. I wasn't there for that, but. Uh, they were told to contact me about the Watcho Club, about my experiences at the Watcho Club, because I've had many, mm-hmm. and they never did, which I'm glad, because it snowed really bad while they were up there. Oh, shit. Yeah, and that scares me, because I know how that road gets to get down from there. When yeah. it snows, you could, be, you could be snowed in up there. Yeah, F that. It's so, scary. Well, it's, it's scary driving here in Utah in the snow, too. People don't know how to drive. I can only imagine Traffic. being being off in the middle of like nowhere, driving through the well, snow. Well, you're up in the mountains, like at over six thousand. It ain't feet, getting plowed, <laughs> and it's it's a windy, crazy road that goes all the way down back into Reno. And when it snows hard, they just close it. You're not getting down the hill. Yeah, you're up there. You're staying there. You're, I've had to sleep on someone's hotel room floor because I got stuck up there <laughs> oh, no. in the snow. Oh shit! So let's circle back to the the family tree. Um, this, like I said, this is the only time I've ever seen you like scared on an investigation. Um, I just remember we were in the basement and we were like kind of packing our stuff up to go upstairs. Um, are you okay with sharing like what you saw? Or yeah, I am now. I mean, I actually talked about it at a Paracon last October, but I didn't talk about it for a while. I don't blame you. I, I, <laughs> I still have a hard time talking about my experience with the Zion building. And what's weird is, like, I remember Psychic Kids, Psychic Kids came into town. A&E came into town. But before they did, they called me. And they were asking me about locations. So I'm, like, giving them locations. And they're like, yeah, we're not going to do the family tree. Too many people have done the family tree. But then they started, like, I heard you. They're like, I heard you had an experience at the family tree. You want to come on camera and talk about it? I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I told them, nope. And oh, I'm like, shit. where did they hear this story from? Because a lot, not a lot of people heard it. But I guess Corey told them, so. Uh, well, we'll just have to have a word with her. <laughs> no, I did last night. She goes, yeah, I'm probably the one that told them. I'm like, <laughs> I said, yeah, because, like, the only people that knew were the people that were there. Unless they listened to an old Buko Boys episode that had yeah, it. Yeah, there was an old episode we did where I talked about it. Didn't go much into detail, I don't remember, but uh, yeah, we did talk about it. So, for anyone that have, has seen the um, Dead Files, they did a couple episodes there, and I think they described this creature on one of those episodes. 
It was, um, from what I remember from how you described it, and you could probably describe it a little bit better than I can, but it almost looked like, um, this weird puppy monkey baby. Yes. This, puppy monkey this baby. Dog like <laughs> creature, but it was like, no, this thing, <laughs> puppy monkey baby. Imagine like an 11 year old boy with spider legs, like half spider, half boy. But you could see like all the rib cage and everything from them just maybe not eating or whatever. Spider monkey baby. And I just remember it crawling on all its spider legs towards us. He couldn't see it because he was looking at me. Yeah, you were walking uh, <clears throat> towards the stairs first. I was behind you. No, I was sitting when I saw it. And then I grab I my remember. flashlight <laughs> and I jump over and I start walking towards the stairs where I saw this. Because Castle just barely walked up the stairs and there was still light coming down from above. And he was going to get his cleaning kit so he could cleanse the book. That book. Oh, yeah. the book. Mm-hmm. And I remember doing an EVP, not EVP, but a Echo Box session after that. Mm-hmm. Where we started asking questions about this spider boy and, and uh, doing, doing this ritual on this book to cleanse it. And it's like, stop, no, don't. Mm-hmm. Like, it was oh, calling us bitches and then mfers and it was it was funny because it was all nice at first it was just answering things and then as soon as castle said he's gonna start cleansing this book all of a sudden it just started calling us every name and every name in the book somewhere i still have the audio of me screaming out when i saw it i, I, might, I have, might have that too well, i might have it too and I was upstairs, and you can hear and that. I'm like, I was telling Corey last night, I said, I don't remember screaming that loud. Yeah, you, yeah, you was loud. It was loud. You, you were like, what the hell was that? Like, you, I mean, you were visibly shaken. Yeah, well. And like I said, I've been on tons and tons of investigations with you, and I've never seen this t- sort of reaction out of you. The, yeah. week, the, week, or, the week or so of sleep after that wasn't, wasn't that good. Oh, so you recovered after a week. After my experience in the Zion building, it was like a month. So. Well, I had to go mm-hmm. back to the family tree, and I remember I was helping Corey with an investigation, and she looked at me. She's like, you okay to go back downstairs? I'm like, I'm going to have to. <laughs> and I have to do it. He's braver than I am is what I'm getting at. Yeah, I mean, I had nightmares about it for a little while. I don't blame you. I almost quit. I almost quit the paranormal, like. That, that kind of shit's out there. I don't, I... Right? Because that don't even look like anything you would think, you know, when you think about well, ghosts I got and stuff. into this thing and I'm <laughs> dealing with old people and people that just passed away and like that. that and then now there's puppy monkey babies chasing you, <laughs> running out of corners. <laughs> with their spider legs. With their spider legs. You know, I've heard rumors of people seeing like lizard creatures and shit like that. I'm like, oh, I hope I don't see nothing like that. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of those, like, um, the creepers or things like that in a lot of the uh, haunted, you know, asylums of abandoned hospitals and things like that. They always have some kind of, like, uh, some shadow creeper. Well, supposedly the Washer Club has one that crawls on all fours, and I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. But a lot of people have. Damn. Up on the third floor, and I'm like, technically, I haven't seen it. What's that picture you got? What building is that where there's that shadow figure? You mean the actual person behind me? Yeah. That looks like a, that's the Washo Club. That's in the Washo Club? That's it. Almost 6.30 in the morning when I took that photo. So that was after a whole night of investigation. And I go, uh, first I take a photo of the entire ballroom with investigators sitting on the benches on both sides. And I'm like, I'm going to walk up to the, the mirror and snap a photo and I'm still holding the, like, the grocery bag full of gear that I picked up. And I had no idea I caught anything until we hit Elko and I got service and I'm going through my photos. What the fuck is that? <laughs> That's insane. <clears throat> that is cool. Yeah, that was a really good shot. Yeah, I got lucky. He probably thought he wasn't in the photo. Right, because he had the reflection of the mirror. Well, the mirror was, like, sitting in a corner, so it was, it was just cornered and so it was looking at a hallway that goes all the way to the stairs Mm -hmm. he would have thought he was completely out of view because he was in the hallway 
Have you ever seen shadow people and like with your eyes? No. With your bare ass eyes? You know, and I've been a lot of places, and everybody's like, "There's shadows moving." Like, I don't see shit. You didn't see any of that Waverly? No. So but Danielle did. I was with Danielle. She's like, "There's shadow people moving." I'm down like, the long hallway, down the corridor with yeah. all the doorways. Oh my god, there was a ton. And it's like it was the second floor mm-hmm. where it was happening, and like you don't see that. I'm like, no, I don't. Oh man, they, because they I'm were... looking through a little LCD screen. That's and when you're filming with the little LD, you have that light, mm-hmm. so your eyes aren't like your eyes aren't sensitive to the darkness around mm-hmm. you. Oh, so you didn't just look at it without because when you're equipment. in the darkness for a long time, your eyes get used to the darkness and you're able to see better. But when you have this little LCD shining light in your face, your eyes don't adjust to the darkness. Even, did you guys do like a tour thing first? No. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say during that Pretty part. much they gave us a map because it was during, it was June 2020 during COVID. Mm. And they just gave us a map and said, good luck. Oh, <laughs> shit. And yeah, I remember that building was so massive. Like, I, I didn't know where I was. Yeah, that we was... We had a crazy experience in the body shoot, though. Oh, my God. Did you see that video? No, I didn't see a video of it, but... Yeah, so, what happened was, somehow, me and Danielle, even though she had her team with her, like we ended up filming just me and her all night. hmm And we go down to the body shoot by ourselves, and we're filming, and I'm showing people, I turn off the night vision, show them how dark it is, blah, blah, blah. She starts walking down. She turns around... She's like, what's that vibrating on you? And at the time, my IR light, like the battery, would shake a lot, and it'd make this vibrating noise. Because <laughs> you were scared and shaking? No, I'm <laughs> She turns around, and then uh, she says something to me about it, and then turns back around, and then you just hear this, bam! Like metal on metal bang come from the very bottom of the chute. Oh, shit. And you've been there, right? Mm-hmm. And so you know how far down it is. Mm-hmm. You know, have you seen where it comes out? Uh, not behind it. No. Uh, Nobody I, would know where it is because it's hidden in the bushes. Mm-hmm. And of course, the property is secure. Yeah, you can't really go back there. There's cameras. Well, there's the bunkhouse back there, but we can't. No, none of us could leave the building to go all the way back down the hill. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we hear this loud metal on metal bang. Scared the crap out of Danielle. <laughs> she comes walking back up. Nope, 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 nope. You know, it's like, I was like, well, I got to go down there and see where it is. She goes, you're not leaving me here. <laughs> so we both make that long walk to the bottom. And, like, you just had this big sheet of plastic. Like yeah. Painter's just, plastic over like the tarp. metal. Like a tarp. Mm-hmm. That's, like, a little separated from the big metal closing that they sealed it off. I was like, we would have heard that plastic in the audio. Oh, yeah. No, there's something there. There's there's definitely something that hangs out. And about. none of us have left the building, and, and the place is secured. They got cameras. They, they watch the cameras. Mm-hmm. I said, I have no clue. I know that walk back out of the body chute was a bit. Because if she, if, if she was down that far down the chute, maybe that thing was getting pissed. We weren't it, that far down. We were about maybe a quarter down. Okay. Because we were not, at that time, we were not dedicated to walking down that. Because I don't know if and did, did it she... was over 90 degrees with over 90% humidity that day. Yeah. Like, we're not walking down that damn thing. <laughs> yeah, because you got to walk back up. <laughs> you have to walk back up. Because, yeah, there's definitely something about two thirds of the way down that just kept standing up and dropping, kept coming up and dropping that I kept seeing. And that then... place was scary. Like, there's never been a location where I'm like, on edge but that place yeah there was a i was getting a, like just spirits galore in that place it's because there's there's nowhere you can have a wall to your back if you're in a hallway you got a door here door there hallway here hallway behind you mm-hmm. openings everywhere to every direction yeah like i can't put my back against the wall anywhere around here <laughs> it was awesome yeah, I, I, that's the place I want to go back. I definitely want to go back for another investigation I'm trying. There. I was going to go back this year, and uh, we didn't book the date soon enough, so all the dates were taken. Oh, damn, unless you want to do a public one, huh? Right. Yeah, I mean, but you're trying to get a private one. Yeah. 
And I was willing to just fork out the money and just get a date, you know, just let me book it. And everybody else was like, well, I got to get people situated to get the time off. I'm like, let me just get a date. Yeah. That's, That's kind of how I would do it is like pick a date and I'll see if I can get the time off. I know someone else, uh, Caden was recently, he, we're talking to him earlier in the year about also going to Waverly. Transalgany Lunatic Asylum. That would be a good that's one. That's also on my list a, of to go. Yeah, I want to do that. If one. I ever go there, I'm letting you know. I'm going to make you come with me. And you've also done the Nevada State Prison quite a bit now, right? I'm one of the docents. So so now that you're a regular there, what, uh, what kind of crazy experiences have you had there? Just like hearing screaming or you hear cell doors close that, you know, when this this prison, you can't, like, just swing a door shut unless you're in Max that has these big, just full sheet metal doors, you know. But the actual cells with the bars, like, you have to operate those from the end of the block, and you can close them all at the same time, so it's very loud. Okay. You can hear them all rolling, like, rolling shut. Mm Mm-hmm. And what you're hearing is, like, maybe a single door just closing. I'm like, well, that sounds kind of weird, you know? Yeah, instead of the whole thing. And then I was walking around. We were doing a tour for a group. And I think I was on the men's block, but around uh, the second level where you go up to the death row. And I could see, like, someone's hand sticking out of a cell down the hall. What? And I said something to Susan. I, was like, I just saw someone's hand, like, you know how they dangle their arms out of the mm-hmm. cell? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I saw. Just hanging out, like, resting on a yeah, on the bar. Yeah, just like resting on the bars. Oh, shit. But we've actually, the last time I investigated, we set up all of our gear, because this was docent night. So it was just us, that docents that do, that help with the prison. So we set up all of our gear. I had Max and the infirmary to myself. So I set up motion detectors and stuff, and then we went out to eat at this Mexican place. We were gone for like an hour. Come back, and my motion detectors are going off as I'm filming, like I'm doing a live, mm-hmm. showing people around, and yeah, you can hear it, like, oh, my motion detectors are going off upstairs. Oh, shit. And yeah, I filmed it, you know, because I left a camera on it, so. Oh, nice. Did, yeah. you, did it pick up anything um, in the camera? Nothing? No, didn't pick up anything. Damn, just motion de- detectors going off. Yeah. That's cool. It is pretty cool. I like it. <laughs> so, okay, so you've been to Waverly. You've been to Wasso. You've been to... Um, Goldfield um, so Hotel. There's the Mackey Mansion. Mackey Mansion. Obviously the Reno, Reno, Nevada prison thing. The one we were just talking about. Nevada State Prison. Nevada State Prison. <laughs> I'm totally here with this today. Nevada. Nevada. Nevada State Prison. Um, so you've been to a lot of places. Like, what's probably the the place that you've enjoyed going to the most and the place that you probably never want to go back? The place I enjoy going to the most is the Washer Club because of the way they do their paranormal investigations. Basically, you know, you book it. After the bar closes, they kind of lock you in. I mean, you're not stuck in the building, but they lock you out of the bar. The bar closes, and you have the entire building. Nobody stays. It's just you in the building, and they kind of tell you how to lock up when you leave. So, and you have the whole night, so it's like I stay till sunrise. Oh, cool. <laughs> I'm not leaving there till seven or so in the morning. Nice. You know, we just kind of, we'll go we'll go up there, we'll go at it for an hour or so, come down. Go out. We have the museum <laughs> that has a table and chairs, and it's comfortable, where you'll have your food and snacks, and you'll kind of take a break there, then you'll go back up, do another hour or so, come back down. And every time you're on break, you're like, okay, what are we going to do when we go back up? Where are we going to be? And so you just do that throughout the night, and before you know it, Sun's coming up, and then you can watch the sun come into the building, and it's just amazing. That that view, because you have a 100-mile view from the building, and the sun's coming up. Yeah, because there's nothing out there. And then you have that natural light (laughs) filling the building in the morning. It's just, it's nothing like it. It clears all the ghosts out, huh? No, that's when it gets, (laughs) 
That's when, when you got sun, that. That's when you got that picture, huh? And then my friend Michelle the Baron, like she took a photo around six thirty in the morning, and caught a shadow person, clear as day. Oh shit! So they're all they're all scurrying out of there, like oh shit, the sun. Well, run. if you think about it, it's, it's <laughs> that's a, not how that works. That's how it works. <laughs> this is a mining community. What did they do? They got up with the sun, went to work. They didn't have alarm clocks in the eighteen hundreds. Do you think the shadow what? people were what? were spirits, though, or are they just shadow people? No, I think Watcher Club has really good spirits there, like people that were proud to be there. They made a lot of money, you know, $4 a day for mining. You couldn't make that anywhere else. I'm pretty sure Zach Bagan said there was evil stuff there. Yeah, they're, they're demons. He they're wouldn't demons. lie to us. <laughs> you know, over the years... <laughs> There's got to be demons. Over the years with different tour guides, they would say the Red Room had a demon in it, which I've never experienced, ever. <laughs> the amount of times I've been in there and investigated that building. Never been anything. Nothing. You know, they say, oh, this door slammed shut. I've never seen that. Um, it used to be... When I first started doing it, like, all the windows were kind of broken and wind would come into the building. And, like, all the walls just had the wooden slats in it with a little bit of space. Mm. So cold air and wind would travel through this building. It would be miserable in the winter. Right, yeah. But now they got a drywall. They got wallpaper up. They they got furniture in there now. Like, a whole bunch of antiques are in there. It's changed a lot. Damn. So now... You know, if it's 40 degrees outside, it's at least 55 or so inside. The it's building. livable. It's it's survivable. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been up to? Uh, so what new projects have you been working on? I'm just filming with whoever I can go film with. I'm not really working on any projects. I just release videos, go film with friends. We just barely did the Bonanza Saloon. Which was a lot of fun in Virginia City. Oh, yeah. We did an episode on the Bonanza. Yeah, we investigated it just recently. And we actually caught an EVP downstairs that said, Hi, Paul. Like, like they knew who the hell I was. Really? Everybody knows you, Paul. Yeah. They've heard about you. Well, I've been in there. You know, the, the owner is really nice. And he, he'll buy me food sometimes. Like, you know, to come in. Oh, so probably I somebody can, mentioned you were I coming. I could bring at, friends in there and like, hey, can I take them down to the basement and show them around and blah, blah, blah. You know, so. That's a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> that is a little weird. It's weird, to, if, it's weird if they don't come back up going with to the basement. friend. <laughs> the friend doesn't ever come back upstairs with them. Then, yeah. tonight, <laughs> tonight I got four Douglas. Last night I did a location I can't talk about. Cause you can't? No. Oh. Because people aren't allowed there so anymore. And then um, we do that all the time. Yeah, like hmm. like the Draper prison that's been torn down. Yeah, they already tore it down. Yeah, yeah it's, good. it's like gone now. And then next month I have Goldfield Hotel. I don't have anything after that until the USS Hornet. Oh shit! The Hornet. I don't actually schedule a lot. Stuff just falls in my lap, like. I'm going to take a couple months off. And then people were like, hey, you want to do this? Hey, you want to do this? Like, hey, yeah. Like, Why hell not? yeah, I do. <laughs> you want to come do the prison this weekend? Yes. Like, hell yeah. <laughs> you, used to, you did a lot. You've done a lot. Like, um, you like you used to be on Badass Bear Doll Oz. You left to do Paranormal Veracity. Um, but while you were with Badass Bear Doll Oz, didn't you, you did like two uh, conventions here in Utah. I did one. You did one. That was I the good one. I did one. And that's the one that I did most of the planning and booking of people and booking of vendors. That one and was actually, um, that's the that's credit. The meant. credit didn't go to me for that because I walked away from the team like right before it actually had, you know, the event went down. Yeah, and that, that's actually how I met Jimmy is he booked her and had her come up. To talk about her stuff and he actually because you know, we had our uh, my old podcast there and he's like you gotta you guys gotta interview jimmy yeah you oh, guys yeah. were doing i talked to you guys into doing the podcast right there at the event so they had their table they were doing podcasts the entire day <laughs> and that's how i found out i was bald 
<laughs> he was taking pictures and I was looking at the pictures and I was like, I have a bald spot. I can fix that. <laughs> Go here a little Photoshop. So now so Make you them do, all bald. So you you've done these events and stuff in the past. Have you thought about doing anything like that again? Or Yeah, just... actually the conversation came up earlier this year to do one at the prison. Um Susan wanted to do one at the prison. You know, we went in, had a meeting, we talked about it. Um, she wanted my, you know, knowledge of experience in putting one together and my connections I have, you know, with celebrities and stuff to kind of help her, like, put one out, you know. And the prison is a perfect place because we have the whole prison yard we could use. Oh, okay. And, of course, we can take people on tours of the prison. We could let people investigate the prison at night. Great place. That's actually a really that, good idea. That sounds like the only thing bad was we don't have the toilets for everybody, so we'd have to bring in the toilets. Mm. But um, she decided not to not to do it this year to concentrate on something else. So maybe next year. Could so happen. if you get it up and going, the EVP team will say, we'll be there, and then... And- who knows? Well, maybe not it's make it. Possible. <laughs> it maybe not make it. I don't know. We made it to that other one in Vegas. We could probably make it to his. No, we yeah, could that make was it. that was a weird event. It was. I was upset because Kane Hodder wasn't there. He was. He was scheduled to be there. He was the guy well, that played. Well, maybe Jason he's the smart one. Yeah, probably. <laughs> that Dodge not getting paid for the event. You know. I know there was a lot of upset celebrities there because I know. Like, we know Ben Hansen, he was there, and uh, Greta, the manager for a lot of the celebrities in the paranormal field, she was pretty upset about how the whole thing went down as well. And she was upset that I didn't come say hi to her right away. I knew by Saturday morning, like, people weren't getting paid. Like, that's how quickly it started to spread. Yeah, they didn't want to come down out of their rooms to do any more stuff for the event. No, mm-hmm. there's quite a few celebrities that weren't at their table that morning. I know Elizabeth uh, St. She, left early. she packed up her stuff Saturday morning and left. Mm-hmm. Didn't even say goodbye. I said bye to her. I was like, bye, Elizabeth. Yeah, the, the, it was... Come back to Utah. <laughs> we came down for the Friday event. We, uh, Ghosty and I drove straight there and like, got up at 6 in the morning. or I got up at 5. Drove straight there. There was a ton of celebrities there Friday, and then Saturday, like, they're like half of the booths were just completely empty. Yeah, it was like, what happened? I mean, the ones that stayed stayed for the fans. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah. I know like the Ghost Hunters were still there. Destination um, Fear. Wraith Chasers were still there. You know, I, I. Josh Gates was there both nights. So was Brian Cano, and uh, I think Dave Trader was there. Yeah, he was emceeing most Jessica things. Jessica Chobot was there both days. Yeah, I ran into the Wraith Chasers again in uh, in Arizona, like in October. We all did a Paracon out there. Oh, that nice. was probably the best Paracon I've ever been to. Honestly. In Arizona? Vulture City. Oh, okay. Because nice. they, they kind of do a three-day event where Friday night is like, you kind of, like, party with all of them they bring in catering they have an open bar and you're just kicking it with all the celebrities and oh that's dope and the way they have it the celebrities are all approachable they're all hanging out with you like yeah you don't have to go wait in line and pay twenty dollars just for two seconds to talk to them no you're hanging out with them they didn't, they didn't last minute cancel the dinner with the celebrities? No. <laughs> like I said, they, they did it. Vulture City is like its own little eco, you know, out in the middle of the desert. So, yeah, they brought in KFC for all of us at the open bar. So we all partied, you know, Friday night. Saturday was, you know, you got your vendors, you got all the speakers going, which you didn't have to pay, get a ticket to see speakers or anything like that. You just... Showed up to the room on time to be there to get a seat. You know. And I said, and they hung, they, you could walk up to any of them and hang out with them for the day. And during the, the way they did ghost hunts that night, instead of having a celebrity assigned to a group and take them around, they moved the group to the celebrity. Oh, so okay. they had the groups move along to different celebrities throughout the night at different buildings. 
Yeah. We're they, just we're taking notes so we know what to do when we They we, have all these different <laughs> buildings in Vulture City and you just would move the group to the celebrity. So they all That's actually them. a really good idea. It, like I said, it's probably the best one that I've ever seen done. They had food trucks there because you're out in the middle of nowhere. There's mm-hmm. can't just leave for five minutes and go hit McDonald's. You had yeah. to drive back into town. Well, when Ghosty and I get rich from the food truck that we open up, we're going to start our own paranormal conventions. <laughs> you guys should open up a waffle lift because that stuff is on point. Well, it's we've got an idea. Thing. Yeah, we got an idea. We have an idea. For it's squatchy food. for yes. sure. <laughs> I kind of want to open up a waffle oven. Like, how how easy could that be? You just make a waffles. I mean, it's already got a business plan. You Sounds just go pretty simple. <laughs> Let's sell waffles. Dude, their waffles are good. You ever been? Oh, for sh- for a long I time. I Think so. It's been a while. I'm r- actually yeah. really hungry right now. <laughs> I'm <laughs> real, real hungry. Of course right you now. are. <laughs> Look, I'm already thinking about food. Thank I don't know. Very much. I'm going to an all-you-can-eat seafood place after this. I'm pretty excited. I'm going to a cooking class. Um, <laughs> I'm excited for next sure? month. You know, I get to do Goldfield Hotel, which is isn't easy to get into. I get to stay at the Clown Hotel, which is kind of cool. You know. Have you been there? Have you done that one? You did say that was like your your midway point, going from like Reno to to Vegas. To Vegas. Yeah. Because it's four hours from me. And it's, it's, people are so scared of it. It's like, it's kind of like going to a haunted house that just has a bunch of clowns. You know, they're yeah. on display. They're not going to jump at you. Right. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not. So it's just a much. lobby that has all these clowns in it and they're, keep adding more. Of course, they got t shirts and hats and, you know, the rooms are pretty basic, like a Motel 6. Some rooms are themed to like Friday the Thirteenth mm-hmm. or the It movie, but I mean it's it's gonna be your normal motel. Besides that, being yeah, next it's to a not cemetery. it's not like it used to be when it used to be like forty dollars a night. It's they they they've made it kind of nice now. Oh, okay. So it's now it's like staying at an Econo Lodge or something, huh? Kind of like you know Motel Six Econo yeah. Lodge type, which is. You know, pictures of clowns on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Motel 6 with so clowns. So it, people like, <laughs> it's so creepy. I can't believe you stayed there. I'm like, it's just. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've never understood, like, the, the whole doll thing. Like, people think dolls are creepy or they're scared of dolls. I'm well, like, Danielle's afraid of dolls. And I told her last night, we were filming me, Danielle, and Corey, so you know what kind of night I had last night. For those two. <laughs> And I'm like telling Corey, like, okay, it's time for you to go into the doll room. And she gave me this look. And then Corey's back behind her like, yes, yes. <laughs> and I was just, I was laughing so hard. There's a doll room? No. <laughs> I just kind of made one up. Like, there wasn't one, but I was going to make one. Yeah. Because most places we go have a doll room of some kind. Right. Even the Mackie Mansion now has... Like, you know, Emma's room is, has gone from having a couple of dolls to having many, many dolls. And I have pictures of over the years of how it's changed, how the mansion's changed. Mm-hmm. I've been there since, I've been in there since 2016. So I have pictures from that to compare to now. Oh, shit. No. I like that lore. building. But that's one of the buildings you go do and... All your light up gear ain't gonna work. Never does in there. Mm-hmm. But you're gonna get EVPs every damn time. I do want to go there pretty bad. There's a lot of there's a lot of buildings. There's there. a lot of buildings to do. I could easily like if you come out for several days, we could easily book every friggin' night to do something. You're right. There's that many buildings there. There is. I mean. I couldn't even list them all, how many different buildings you could do uh, just in that one spot. 32. No, it's not 32. <laughs> but I've done, let's see, the Washo, the Mackie, the Opera House, the Bonanza, the Delta, the Miners Union Hall, um, the, uh, I can't remember, it's some kind of, there's a building that has people that put up all the historic flags. They're kind of like bikers. I can't remember what that one's called. Done the train station. 
I've done St. Mary's Art Center. I've done a lot of them. Mm, nice. Miner's Cabin, Silver Queen. See, when you said you couldn't name them all, look at you go. Look at you go. <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> if you think about them. <laughs> but it's like sometimes things just fall on your lap. Like, you know, you'll be walking around, and I'll have my hat on and be like, hey, you want to come investigate here tonight? Sure, yeah, why not? Well, that's how you ended up nice. in the bed in the first place. You were delivering for, like, Uber Eats or something. I remember meeting up with you at Synchronicities, and you're like, yeah, I just got an offer to move to Nevada. I did. I kind of fell in my lap. Like, that wasn't a planned thing. It was just like... No. Someone, like, like, someone just told me I should do it. I had a falling out with somebody, and it was kind of a public thing, and my friends in, in Reno were like, you need to move here. And then I hit up one of my friends who's a medium, and she has a five-bedroom house, you know. I was like, hey, you need a roommate? She's like, hell yeah. That's where I'm still at. Nice. So yeah, I'm in a very nice gated community in Reno in a five-bedroom house. Oh, nice. yeah. Making cereal for post. <laughs> Having fun. Well. And I'm right in the backyard of Virginia City, so. Nice. It's, very, very nice. I mean, there's so much to do, and there's... No, Virginia City is is it? It's not like overly populated, is it? No, maybe it's there's more of like a tourist. Eight hundred or so people that live there. Yeah, so it's, it's easy so to it's, investigate. It's almost a ghost town, about. but not. After seven o'clock, it's really quiet. You have some bars open. Perfect for ghost hunting. And like, as far as food goes, I warn everybody that comes into town: like, decide what you're going to eat before six o'clock, because your options get really slim after five. Oh shit! You, no, I'm not kidding. No, I believe Restaurants it. Restaurants start closing because they're not open for dinner. You got the Red's Pizza, which is amazing. Um, you have a Mexican place; they'll stay open late. But other than that, it's like it's all the ghosts. Yeah, they close up. They they're close like, nope, up. Ghosts. So the ghosts don't get them. No, because everybody <laughs> leaves town. Like the tourists leave. Right. Yeah. There's no point in staying open when nobody's there. So the only people that stay are usually getting the last bites to eat and or they're hanging out at the bar that makes sense it's and people make videos i see youtube videos all the time this place is so haunted everybody leaves at night <laughs> <laughs> it's so haunted. that's what i just said it's the ghost they leave so the ghosts don't get them no that's not the reason it's like <laughs> the demons come out to first, play after 6 p.m first all the stores start to close around four or five and then at 6.66 p.m. And then... The 6.66. The stragglers <laughs> will wander off into the restaurants that are still open and have dinner. And then usually after that, everybody's gone. So you could actually go down in the middle of your investigation and go out to the street. You could lay on the street. You could take photos. And ain't nobody coming. Because <laughs> the town is empty. Right, yeah. Everyone knows, lock your door so the ghosts don't get you. Ghost will get you. <laughs> you can door-to-door -door ghost hunt in Virginia City. I believe it. That place is old. I mean, it's over 100 years old, so according to our bylaws, it's haunted. Yeah, according to the EVP standards, it's over 100 years <laughs> old. You guys have standards? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah but do you have spirit classifications? This, that was a class two <laughs> spirit. No, that was uh, another team that did that. Oh. <laughs> you don't have those rules? No, it, it's it, human or not human. Like <laughs> that was that was a nasty that we're dealing with. <laughs> yeah, this is a that was a this is an a, asshole. <laughs> and I still yet to make a video about anything demonic. Now maybe if I ever investigate an outhouse, that will be my demonic episode. You hear the demon growling from within the. Outhouse. You hear that? Bob's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Did that reminds me of a video you just showed us that we can't really talk about on this. Oh, <laughs> the funny things that happen. One of, you know what? One of my favorite investigations I ever did with Paul is there was there was just four of us. We got salt air to ourselves. Not even in employees. They literally gave me the alarm code and went home. Yeah, that was a one in a million opportunity. And I was right so jelly that I couldn't make it. Yeah, that's why I'm bringing you. You have no uh, idea what we saw. Yeah, I'm I've, so I've talked about it several times to him, but let's talk about it again. I'm down. Tell me. Tell me more. I mean, you see this huge basketball-sized orb, like, with your bare eyes. Like, your bare-ass eyes. Bare-ass eyes. 
and we're all standing on the we're not standing we're sitting on the you got you were standing yeah but we're sitting up on the second floor just taking a break not filming not investigating we're all i can't even remember what we were talking about and we all just start looking at this thing just float down from the rafters and we all see the same thing and we're just like Yep. And none of us grab a camera and look, we were like... We had our cameras going. They were recording. They just weren't pointed in that direction. Right. <laughs> we were just all kind of like dumbstruck at this point. And I remember us running over to where the stairs were to look down at the floor like, okay, did, is there anything on the floor? Yeah, like, we went down and investigated to see if something had fallen. Which was weird for me because you guys saw like an orb, like a ball-shaped thing. I saw what looked like a, a piece of cloth. Like it wasn't ball-shaped for me. But it could be... But we... I mean, we all saw it. Because we were all, like... We all had a different angle at it. You and Caden were standing right next to each other, and me and Zach were at sitting at a table. So we all had different angles on this this item, but we're all watching it. And I all I could think about is what Caden told me when we walked in. Because we walked in, and we're staring at the stairs. The stairs are in front of us, and he's saying, I'm seeing this girl in white fall from the rafters and i'm like are you serious <laughs> and then we all saw it oh shit but yeah it kind of like floated to where we had enough time to just like yeah we all just staring like what is going on that's pretty and nice. i don't ever do that normally i normally if you ever watch my videos i have this reaction like are you fucking kidding me <laughs> you know that's my reaction to anything weird that happens <laughs> that's wild <laughs> Because I've, I've had some crazy stuff. I'm like, I don't, I don't even know how that happened. Like, but, yeah, I wish we caught that on film because that was... That would have been really cool. Hard to explain to anybody. Like, That would be really cool to see that on film, especially from the different angles you're saying that the camera might have picked up the right thing. If we saw it with our eyes, then the camera would have saw it. Exactly, for sure. So, yeah, I just... We left there kind of like, I don't know what that was. Damn. Damn, damn. I do remember the Asian people that tried breaking into the building, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did have people trying to break in. That night? Well, yeah, you guys that were night there? while we were there. They tried breaking in. What the hell? I think they're they, like they trying were... to pry open the doors from the outside. Yeah, they're trying to throw they, a rave. I think they <laughs> said that they were trying to use the bathroom. With a crowbar. Like, they just bring crowbars to the bathroom. Yep. Of course. No, yeah. they were literally trying to break the door open. They were. That's crazy. We're like hiding behind the wall, like so we're not seen. I think Zach threw something towards the door to scare the crap out of him. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I would have started whispering through the door, like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> Went to the balcony above him, start yelling at him. What are you? Drop, no, start dropping things on him, on him and then have somebody <laughs> whisper through the door at him. You gotta use a bigger crowbar. <laughs> I don't know what they were using, but like, you could hear it hitting the door. Like, yeah. what are they doing? <laughs> we're like, this is gonna be a police moment. I just know it. <laughs> oh, that'd be. We're gonna oh, be man. on the first forty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Well, do you have any other experiences that you want to share with us? I have many. What's so? What's like one that pops like your? Probably either, I think we've already gone over, like, your most favorite. What's probably, and well, the, I'm assuming family, which is probably your scariest. Um, what's the, so I did ask earlier, but what's, like, the one place that you wouldn't want to go back to and why? Case Cross. And the reason why, because, A, you're surrounded by residential houses there. And I could hear them in my, like, I'm wearing headphones. I could hear it the people up in their in their houses oh in their yard you know you mm -hmm. can hear them so i'm like okay that's contamination and then i was getting bit everywhere from <laughs> bugs they weren't demons doesn't they demons bite demons <laughs> i remember having all these welts all over me from bug bites so it was just miserable and uh, hey you have to hike all your crap down there and we had people walking through our investigation. Just random people would just come walking through. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can see that being frustrating. I was like, why did we pay for this? You know, 
Right, because people are just, <laughs> don't have to pay. You can just walk right in. Hey, it. now <laughs> the person you had to go through, I wouldn't go through for a million dollars. You know, they ain't gonna happen. I have no interest in that location whatsoever. That's kind of how I feel about Merker, Merker Cemetery, because just anybody can show up. Like anybody can show up and has. Mm-hmm. You know, you'd be in the middle of an investigation, and some teenagers show up with beer and start partying. I've had that. Right. Yeah. So. And you have to walk up a big hill. Yeah. Right in the cemetery. That's that's where I go. I don't do mm-hmm. too many cemeteries. Like I, I hate being outside. Go Mosquitoes. Hunting. Contamination. Contamination. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, Mercury. You have. You're out there in the middle of nowhere, but still get contamination out there. Birds, birds mostly. You can hear them. Gunslingers. Well, the gunslinger gunslingers. <laughs> People out camping, shooting up, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a sad location, and I've done it many times, but I avoid, like, we have a lot of cool cemeteries in the Virginia City area that are just up there hidden in the hills, but I, I don't do them very often. There's a bunch like that out in uh, Eureka, too. There's a bunch of hidden little like cemeteries. Fitches. Mm-hmm. Well, there's so, the, like Fitches, and then there's a couple others just up in the hills. There's the uh, Silver City one. That's a huge one, though. Yeah. There's the Diamond one. Yeah, I got them all mapped out on Google. Oh, like, nice. Every Utah cemetery yeah, there's, is mapped. I've only been to maybe like four or five kind of sp- in that little area. But, yeah, they're just kind of sprinkled throughout. There's these little cemeteries that are like, like Merker, but small. It's little small versions of, of that. Mercury is just so popular, and the reason why it's popular is because it's free to go out there. Yeah. Or you could pay someone 40 bucks for the chance to go out there, you know. <laughs> yeah, just, just show up. <laughs> There's been times where I'm, like, looking, and I see people are, like, doing public hunts, and I'm like, I just want to go crash this. Yeah, what are they going to do? If I see someone doing, uh, I was, I think it was, like, last night I saw a, a particular team doing a live stream for Mercury, and I was like, I so want to just go crash their live stream. I can't. I've never been able to do that. Crash a live stream? No, do a live stream from Merker. I don't have service. Oh really? Right. Yeah, there there was a team that was doing it a couple nights ago. I was like I, I just I was want like, to show maybe up. they have AT and T because I have Verizon. And I ain't got no <laughs> service out there, no bars, and I know what it looks like on the other end of my live. Like it looks all choppy. Well, oh. what where can they find are you? Find you. Where can, where, they, where, find where you? can they find, find you? you? Just, just search for Paranormal Veracity. I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Where else? All the things. All the things. All social. The things. All the Paranormal social. Veracity. Lots of videos. You did a documentary as well, didn't you? I've done two. Two documentaries. Mm-hmm. I want to do another one. Just, I need two. serious people that are down on the to EVP. We're, we're serious. Are you serious? Uh huh. Super serious. Super serial. You don't even like look, post. You don't look it. We're don't we're look, super serious. You don't like look post. serious. <laughs> I guess we're not. We're out. You're out. Tar- <laughs> uh, out. We're not serious enough. <laughs> well, ghosts who don't play that, guys. What? Was it too early for ghosts who it don't play that? It is too early because we didn't tell our own socials. Because after you're done looking up Paul's videos at Paranormal Veracity. Check us out on evp.pod Instagram and Facebook. You can also email us at evp.pod at gmail.com. If you are looking for Paranormal Gear, check out our affiliate link to ghoststop.com. I do watch <laughs> their show all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's boring and then I tune it off. We're the, which is the, most of the time. Um, never. Never boring. Only when I repeat myself multiple times when I'm telling the story. Twice. Yeah, two or three times. Yep. You know those episodes like, did you research this at all? No, we're going to wing it. <laughs> like today? Always winging it. Like, yeah, we could have been prepared. I could have had EVPs and stuff for you guys. You played one. I but played you know one. what? You can get more and we can post those throughout the week. I got a lot more. Oh, see? We, and then we'll just promote your paranormal veracity. top eight, top five. <laughs> We were so prepared. Hell yeah. 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 Well, you guys know me, so it's like, oh, we know Paul. Yeah, we know what to do. Wait, who are you? This is is not a stranger. Yeah, there's no danger here. I mean, he may be strange, but he's not a stranger. (laughs) But we'll accept strangers after this. Stranger danger. (laughs) (laughs) Well, all right, guys, go see, don't play that. Peace out, butterflies.
Peace. This is the EVP Podcast.